This afternoon, I have a question for you. Why are so many pastors condemned to hell? Well, how do I know that they're pastors in hell? Well, Mary Baxter, if you've read any of her books, was taken to hell many years ago. And if you'll go on YouTube and go to Mary Baxter and watch, see some of her, her works, you'll realize that in hell there's a very special place for pastors who led their flocks astray. So many of us grew up in church, some kind of a church, and many of us had a pastor. And we looked up to the pastor for Bible knowledge and for spiritual guidance. In the Hebrew, the word pastor is ra'a, R-A-A-H. And the, the word means shepherd. Well, what is a shepherd? Well, back in the days of Yeshua, Jesus, when he was walking the face of the earth, a shepherd was a fellow that led his sheep. Now, my people, the Scots, I, I have Scottish background, my people changed all that. They started training dogs to drive sheep. And so when we think of a shepherd today, we don't think of a shepherd walking down through the valleys with his sheep following. We think of a shepherd driving his sheep with his dogs. Well, that's, that's, it's, it's very different than that. So here's the question. You have a pastor who's a shepherd of the flock, and the question is, is he leading his sheep or is he driving his sheep? Well, you're probably thinking, what brought this whole idea on, this question on of pastors and pastors in hell? Well, I meet lots of pastors in my travels. I don't meet pastors necessarily in churches. I meet them out in, the, in life, in doing life. In fact, I was walking through a mall one day, and a friend of mine said, I want you to meet these three pastors. And so we, I went and met them, and they were Nazarenes. And I said, wow, my best friend's a Nazarene. And they said, well, who's that? And I said, Yeshua. And one of them turned to the other one. He said, do you know who she is? And it broke my heart. Because here's these three pastors ready to retire. And they didn't even know that Jesus' Hebrew name, his birth name was Yeshua. Well, another time, we was, I was in a restaurant with Patricia. And we were having lunch. And I walked by a table of five or six elderly gentlemen. And I heard them talking about praying in tongues. Well, I went back and I said, wow, I'm not, I didn't mean to be nosy, but I overheard somebody talking about praying in tongues. Do you fellows pray in tongues? And they said, no, we don't. And I said, well, I'm new to the area because I had just moved up here. And I said, I'm looking for some Christians. And they said, well, there's 70 churches in Butler. I said, I'm not looking for church folk. I'm looking for people that love Jesus, love Yeshua. Well, they said, well, go to churches. That's probably where you find them. Well, I didn't know that they were pastors at the time. So I went back and had lunch. And I walked Patricia over to the table on the way out. And I said, I would love for you to meet Dr. Patricia. To come to find out that they were all Presbyterian retired ministers. And one of them had been on the missionary field for 32 years. And what were they leading people to? They were leading them to become Presbyterians. Well, they didn't know Yeshua. They didn't have a personal relationship with him. How do I know that? Because I asked them. And they looked at me like I was a nutcase. Well, Patricia and I have a mission. And, you know, over the past years, the church has gotten turned upside down. In fact, there's a, there's a group of people who have infiltrated the churches, the, the seminaries, and they have a goal. And their goal is to create a one-world government. And so they've undermined Christianity. So Christianity today is not in the buildings any longer. As a matter of fact, I meet very few pastors who have a personal relationship with Christ. And that breaks my heart. But this is where you come into our ministry. Because thankfully, you're, you're here watching our videos and you're here being taught. And we want you to be empowered. So I want to teach you a, a really simple principle. It's called exponential growth. Well, it's how the, how the body of Christ grows. So if you had, let's say that you had a penny, and every day you got another penny for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, you'd have, what, 30 cents, right? Well, suppose that, that, that penny was doubled every day. So tomorrow you had 2 cents. The next day you had 4 cents. The next day you had 8 cents. At the end of 30 days, 
just by taking and doubling that penny every day, you would have $5,368,709.12. Well, suppose instead of pennies, those were people. Well, we want to reach the, the world for Christ. We want to reach the nation for Christ. As a matter of fact, we want to reach, reach America. And America is not just North America. It's Central America and South America. In fact, there was a time that, that, that Father told me that he wanted me to place 100 million audio Bibles in America. And I said, Father, there's only 300, 300 million people in America. You know, that's like one out of three. I can't get my arms around that. I can't grasp that. And he said, I said America, Will. I didn't say the United States of America. Well, I got one on to Google, and I pulled up the population of Central, South, and North America, including Canada. You know how many people there were in, in the Americas? Just shy of one billion. Well, a hundred million, that's only, that's only one out of, you know, I can get my arms around that. I can grasp that. Well, part of our mission, Patricia and I have a mission. And our mission, some years ago, Papa took me to the throne room, and he told me at that point in time that he didn't look at me anymore as Will. He didn't look at Patricia as Patricia. He looked at us as one. And from that day forward, we would be in the throne room all the time. That's where we would be. We'd be in the throne room. And so we're very cognizant of the fact that we're there with him. And then he said, I'm giving you hundreds of millions of souls. Well, he wasn't talking about Patricia and I. He was talking about our whole family. And because you're here now, you're part of our family. You're our brothers and sisters in Christ. So if we can get you empowered and we can, and we can teach you how to do it, you know, you can help us reach hundreds of millions of people for Christ. Now think about this. I, I went on Google and there are excess of 320,000 Protestant churches in the United States. That's not counting the Catholic Church. That's just the Protestant churches. That's 320,000. Well, if you, if you were simply to take uh, 100 members per, per, per ministry, and we know that's not accurate because there's some that have 20, 30,000 people. And there's some only have five. So let's just take 100. Well, now we're talking about, you know, 32 million people that we can reach just by reaching pastors and getting pastors born again and then teaching them about the born again experience. And instead of them teaching about theology and other stuff in their congregations, they can be teaching the gospel. Wouldn't that be a phenomenal place to be? Well, in the process, we've, we've developed a, a real simple pattern for you to follow, a real simple menu for you to follow. And there's basically three things that you can do with us. And the first of all, if you know of any pastors who needs to be born again, then you can start praying for them, him or her. That's step number one. Step number two, you can find the address of their church and mail them the gospel message. Because a lot of them, you see, just because a person's in clergy, we, we make the assumption that they're Christians. In fact, I'm mean, sad to say, most of the people that tell me they're Christians, when I ask them when they had their born-again experience, they, th they look at me like I have, you know, it's like deers in the headlights. Well, wow, what are you talking about? Well, you see, we, we've come to believe that and everybody thinks they're a Christian because they go to church on Sunday. They don't realize what and what it entails to become a Christian. So the second, the, the the third thing that we have for them to do, is you can send them to Patricia's salvation message video, and underneath of this video on YouTube, I've put a link for that. And you can also send them to her Heaven or Hell Your Choice book, which is a free PDF. So in the process, we want to give you everything that we have to empower you. So that whatever we have, we've given to you. Because you see, there's no competition in Christ Jesus. There's not any competition. Now, there's competition between religious organizations. I mean, I want that person in my church, and you want that person in your church. But what's the motivation behind that? Well, uh, to be blunt, most of the time it's money. It's money because I want the money in my coffers so we can do what we want to do in our church. When I go to somebody's church and you say, welcome to my church, I don't want to be there. I want to be in his church. And if you're born again, you're in his church. If you want to go to church, go to, the, go to the mirror, 
Look in the mirror, look directly into your eyes and say, Hello, church. Because Christ lives in you and you're his church. Did you know that, did not, not know that, that, that the Holy Spirit lives in you? You know, you are the body of Christ. And so you're, you're, you're the, the people, the persons, the, the folks that we need to encourage, to empower, and to help, help us. Now, every time you share the gospel with somebody and they come to Christ, you're building your, 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 your account in, in the heavenlies. You know, we say, well, if you do this or that, there's a consequence. And immediately people think, well, that's a bad thing. Well, there are good consequences and bad consequences. There are both. So, you know, in the book of Jeremiah, there are eight different chapters and verses that God fusses at pastors. And if you go down below this, I'm not going to share these with you now because you can go down below the screen here, and I've listed all of them for you. So I'm really here to say to you, look, you're important. You're a brother and sister in Christ. So everything that Patricia and I have been given, we want to give you so that you can have what we have. And then when you get things that we don't have, you can bring them back to us because it's all about what is freely given, we're supposed to freely give. So in sharing that with you, I want to thank you for being a part of our ministry, for helping us, to helping us reach the world for Christ. So go down below this video, read the little bits, this down there, and jump on board. God bless you.